So I bought this Mr. Cool one and a half ton ductless mini split online and it was shipped to my house in three boxes. I really like these units because they are 100% DIY, energy efficient, affordable, and the refrigerant is pre-charged, so no need for an HVAC professional. This is my second time purchasing this unit. I installed one about 10 months ago in my loft and it is working really, really well. All right, so uh, now that I have my DIY Mr. Cool mini split unboxed and all the pieces out, um, I'm gonna quickly review the components. Here's the condenser unit, um, or the outside condenser unit. Uh, this little smaller type of box here is the mount that I purchased for the condenser unit. Instead of pouring a concrete slab or having it on a concrete slab, I opted to purchase the kit um, that you can actually mount it on the wall outside of your establishment, home, garage, whatever you may have. So the cool thing about having the stand to actually mount your outside condenser on is to save the valuable refrigerant line length. Um, the refrigerant lines are here and it has about 25 feet of them. So if you mount your inside unit, which is this guy, on a wall that's higher, and if you plan on trying to wrap it around a building or if you're gonna drop it down a pretty good ways, you may not have enough length in your refrigerant lines to put your outside unit on the ground. Um, it's probably a corner case, maybe, if I had to guess, maybe 10% of the people who install these have an issue with the length of the refrigerant lines that come with this unit. Um, I happen to be one of those people. I, had a, um, I have this exact same unit installed inside of my workshop here but in my loft which is upstairs that i have my home office in and uh i had to run the line outside and all the way down the back of my wall this guy's got the mount to here yes, yeah one screw there we go all right so this is the template that you would use to mount this guy on the wall here closer to the camera so you can see it it's two hooks here sit on the inside so they're going to hook on these on the top and then these two indentations on the bottom will hook to the bottom of the mini split pretty standard mount and this guy is not too heavy it's it's fairly light it's not bad at all as you can see here are the lines and the refrigerant lines are packed in here with a tie wrap. This is the lines that go to from the inside unit to the outside unit. They are already pre-connected. There's no connections that you have to make. All of the lines that go to this mini split, except for the drain line here, are inside of this tube um, that go to the condenser unit. We are approaching summertime in South Louisiana. Uh, really, really hot, humid here. As you can see from my shirt, I'm not even doing anything. The sun's out and um, I'm already sweating bullets in my workshop. So um, this is a good time to install some humidity control and AC into my workshop. Part of the reason why I need this unit installed is to prevent my tools from rusting. If I don't put in a concentrated effort to keep those tools in good shape, they will very quickly rust in this environment. So I need something to not only cool, but to extract the humidity out, which is what air conditioners normally do. I am not an HVAC expert, but I know that when you put a lot of fans in, all you're doing is moving around the humidity. It may feel more comfortable to you, but from a humidity perspective, it's not extracting the humidity out and pumping dry air in. I'm gonna install this guy for you and hopefully you learn something and you can determine for yourself if this is a project that you are willing to perform yourself. Be back soon with bells and whistles on. All right, so what we're gonna do first is put together the stand for the outside condenser unit. This is uh, 
the stand that the outside condenser unit will sit on, will rest on, um, on the wall off of the ground. I would rather go ahead and get it done now before I get rolling on installing the mini split. What happens is once you mount the crossbar, they have little slots here that slide through to both legs like so. Like this. And then mount these in the middle somewhere. I'm securing these now. Um, the condenser unit is obviously gonna sit on top of these screws and then the washer and uh, the nut will go on top of that once it's secured. But I know that if I don't place them in the correct spot now, the percentage chance that I'm going to lose them in the next two hours is gonna be extremely high, so. All right, now it's time to install the back plate for the mini split. I'm gonna use this template to pre-drill my holes. I was originally gonna put the mini split on this far wall here, the one that's colorful. The breaker box that I would be using for the mini split is in the back. I'm gonna find a way to mount it where the breaker box or the, or the junction box is already installed in the back of my shed. I could still put the mini split over here and it has plenty of slack in the refrigerant lines to drop it down and wrap it around the house. I just don't think that would look very good and it would aggravate me every time I would look at it. It's part of the reason why I cleaned up that wall back there is in anticipation of putting the mini split unit either on that wall or hanging off of that wall. So I plan on installing the mini split right off the edge of the stairs I'm gonna drop down two two by fours that are gonna hang down and be secured to the stairs as well as to the studs. The reason why I'm not gonna mount it way back there on the wall is because there's too many obstructions to the right and to the left and I'm concerned about the mini splits airflow. So I wanna bring it out to the front as far as I can in order to minimize the obstructions that are adjacent to where I plan on mounting the mini split. I stapled the mini split cardboard template where I wanted to mount the mini split and made sure it was level. Next, I built a simple wood frame that I secured to the staircase. I attached the metal frame on top of the template, made sure everything was perfectly level and secured the metal frame with screws. So you have two options on where to route the refrigerant piping. You can keep it where it is by default and have it run that way. If the hole that you're gonna drill in the wall is gonna be to the left of the unit from the front, or you can do what I'm doing here and slowly bend the piping to the right. You don't wanna put any big kinks in it. And they have a port right here that you can actually tear open and have the piping come out of the side here. I'm not gonna need to do that because how I am gonna mount it, it can go straight back, but I do actually have to bend it to where it can go straight back to the wall. This piece right here goes in the back. I don't even know why I took this off. I didn't need to. Since mine is gonna go straight back, I can leave that guy on there. So uh, the next step is to actually pick this guy up and mount it on top of its support rails, which are gonna hook in right here. This is where you connect the drain hose to the unit right here. And you just have to make sure that you don't have any holes in your drain hose. I actually ran mine underneath my faucet a few minutes ago, and I actually have a little pinhole that's right here. So hopefully I have enough room to get this guy outside and then I can snip that. The inside unit is fairly light, unlike the outside unit. I made sure the 25 foot of hose was in front of my ladder before I lifted the inside unit and set it in place on the metal frame. I tilted the unit to lock the top in place and then lowered the bottom. The unit took some minor finagling to secure the lower portion. 
The refrigerant bundle and drainage hose is supported by two storage hooks I secured to the inside staircase. This is to make sure the piping and draining hose are supported and routed to the wall at a downward angle. Next, I used a three and a half inch hole saw bit and arbor to drill a hole in the wall. I made sure the outside of the hole was five to seven millimeters lower than the inside for proper drainage. I installed the plastic sleeve in the hole to protect the piping. I intentionally installed it backwards with the trim piece on the outside because I used spray foam to seal the hole on the inside and planned to build a wood structure to cover the lines completely. It didn't need to be pretty on the inside. Before I mounted the outside condenser bracket, I had to get rid of a wasp nest on the inside of a pallet. I spotted the nest before I got stung, thankfully. I mounted the condenser bracket adjacent to the other unit I installed for my home office and made sure everything was level before attaching it to the back wall. Hardy, stop eating that grass. I lifted the unit, secured it to the bottom rails of the bracket, and verified it was level. Were you watching her? No. When she's outside, you always got to keep an eye on her. She's going to get herself in trouble. Why do you think all dogs love me the most all the time? Huh? Yes, they do. Next, I wrapped the excess refrigerant piping around the outside of the bracket in wide, loose loops. I removed the top plastic cap to expose the electrical components and the bottom water tray to expose the refrigerant piping connections. After removing the plastic seals on top of the high and low sides, I immediately attached the refrigerant piping. I aligned the refrigerant pipes and made sure they were not stressed. After I tightened each screw connector by hand, I tightened the bottom screw connector and then the top according to the instructions. The instructions are very specific, so if you plan to do this yourself, be sure to read them carefully. The couplings work with tapping rings, so they may leak if the pipes are loosened and reconnected. I check for leaks with a spray bottle that contained Dawn soap and water. Finally, I remove the cover on the top valve and open the valve with a 19 millimeter hex wrench counterclockwise. I repeated this process on the bottom valve as well. Next, I connected the electrical cable from the inside unit to the outside unit. I made the electrical connections, attached the water box and electrical box, and put pipe insulation around the refrigerant pipes. I'm not going to cover the electrical part of the insulation process because I'm simply not qualified to provide this advice to you. I encourage you to call a professional electrician to perform this work for you. All right, so what I have to do is install these two filters into the two sides of the unit right here. These guys just fold out and it slides into these little slots. The green part is, which is sort of stiff, it's gonna be in the back. There we go. All right. <laughs> Easy as that. This unit came with a remote control. It also has Wi-Fi. I'll show you how to set up that in a minute. But um, I think that the most convenient place to mount this remote control is right by the door. So when I come in, I can turn it on. When I leave, I can turn it off. It comes with uh, two AAA batteries that you put into the remote and I'm gonna mount this thing on the wall 
it came with some really small screws that were sort of uh, cheap and plastically, plasticky, plastic, plasticky? That's not a word, but you know what I mean. The screws that I was referring to that it came with, these guys are really, really small. I'm not sure if you can see that, but they're very, very, very little. And um, I just don't think that they'll hold up, so I'm gonna go get some longer ones. And there you have it. Just like this. Use it right here, pull it out, turn it on. So in the box with the DIY Mr. Cool Mini Split, you have the installation manual, then there's the user manual. You'll have a remote control manual. Five year limited warranty and your seven year compressor warranty registration form. Quick setup guide. It comes with what is called a Mr. Cool Smart Kit. This guy contains a USB Wi-Fi adapter. It also has three stickers for a QR code. You can scan your this code and the app and it will configure or connect to your unit automatically. Okay, so the USB stick goes right in here. All right, awesome. So the way that you need to configure your mini split to join your Wi-Fi network is to get it in AP mode. Um, how you do that according to the instructions is you press the power button and you press the LED button seven times within three minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. AP mode. I'm going to connect my phone to the SSID that this is putting out. Once I connected to the SSID of the unit, I opened up the Mr. Cool app and configured the unit. The app doesn't have the same features as the remote control, but it is still very useful. As you can see, I have two units. I will log in to the one I installed in this video. I can change modes from cool to dry to heat to auto and back to cool by pressing the mode button. I turn the unit off by hitting the power button to the lower left of my screen. I can also set a schedule for the unit to turn off and on at a certain time. While this works very well, I still log in after it is supposed to shut off because I've noticed that sometimes it doesn't always shut off. I use my IR thermometer to measure the cold air exiting the unit. This unit cooled my 25 by 25 foot workshop with 18 foot ceilings quickly. I'm very happy with it. This is going to be such a pain in the